It had been a long, cold winter on the island of Sodor. The weather was warm, all the flowers were blooming, and all the snow was gone. As Thomas filled up his tank with water, he felt very happy. Thomas was very happy spring had finally come. That means he no longer has to wear his snow plow. Annie and Clarabelle were also proud that winter was over. Oh. Finally, it is springtime. I know, Annie. No more snow, which means Thomas has no longer has to wear his snow plow. If only we can survive the next coming winter. <laughs> oh, come on, Clarabelle. Don't let the next winter come so early. It's spring now. Winter is over. Thomas is right, Clarabelle. And Annie and Clarabelle both agree. Suddenly, the tracks beneath Thomas started to rumble as something was coming. Huh. That's weird. Yeah, Gordon doesn't make the track rumble when he puffs by. Um, I don't think it's Gordon, Annie. Then, Thomas saw a line of runaway trucks racing towards him. They had been uncoupled from Hero, and they raced past Thomas very fast. Thomas gasped. Cinders and ashes. Those freight cars are racing on the main line and they're going too fast. Something bad can happen. I better race after them and stop them. But sorry, Annie and Clarabelle. I'll have to leave you here. Luckily, Thomas didn't have a passenger train to Paul. So his driver uncoupled him from Annie and Clarabelle. And Thomas raced after the runaway freight cars to stop them. Be careful, Thomas. Good luck, Thomas. The runaway freight cars raced fast down the track. Thomas was determined to stop them, so he raced after them. Thomas went faster and faster and faster. The freight cars raced around a sharp bend. But Thomas was right behind them. And he was not going to stop until he caught up to them. Then, Thomas had an idea. Marin Station is just up ahead. I can puff ahead of the freight cars and warn the station master. And he'll call the near the signalman down the line. And he'll switch the points. So Thomas went faster and faster. The junction laid ahead. The freight cars went first. Then Thomas yelled to the signalman, Points! And the signalman changed the points. Now Thomas was in front of the runaway freight cars. And luckily he was soon to Marin. 
At last, he reached the Marin Station. Runaway freight cars are on the loose on the main line. You have to call the signalman and tell him to switch the points quickly on it. The station master quickly phoned the signalman. And the freight cars raced past Thomas and through Marin Station. I hope this works. The signalman soon got the message and quickly changed the points just in time and set them to the quarry. The Troublesome trucks raced into a siding at the quarry. They biffed and smashed into the buffers. Luckily, no one was hurt. And the main line was safe, thanks to Thomas. Thomas arrived at the quarry and surveyed the damage. Luckily, the freight cars were off the track. But Thomas still did the right decision. And his driver went to phone for help to clean up the mess. And no time at all, Sir Topham Hat arrived on board Stanley and Rocky. He stepped off Stanley and walked up to Thomas. Well done, Thomas. You saved the main line from these runaway trucks. You once again did the right decision to stop them. You are a really useful engine. And that made Thomas so proud it made his firebox glowed. Thank you, sir. I knew I had to stop them. And you did, Thomas. You did. The news soon spread around Sodor, and it also spread to Hollywood, California, in the newspaper. Chan! Wow, I can't believe what I'm seeing! That blue train is incredible! I want him for my next movie! Get me Thomas the Tank Engine. Da na 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 na
na na na na na na na na na Thomas and Friends, set for action. Soon, the freight cars were lifted back onto the track. Thomas felt like a hero because he stopped the runaway freight cars. And Sir Topham Hatt was right. What he did was very brave, and Thomas was a brave little engine. For sure. That night at Tidmouth Sheds, the other engines heard what Thomas did, and were very proud of him. Well done, Thomas. Yeah, Thomas. You saved the main line from those runaway trucks. What you did, Thomas, was very heroic. You were a hero, Thomas. Thanks. Everyone, even James and Gordon were impressed. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt arrived at the sheds. Thomas, what you did today spread very fast. Thomas was puzzled. What do you mean, sir? Well, I'm glad you asked. Thomas, I just got a call from a famous movie director from Los Angeles, California, from a movie studio. And he says that he read the newspaper and what you did today was in it. 
Huh. Doesn't the newspaper take longer than that? Yes, Percy. But today, it was very speedy for somehow. Anyway, he called me and told me that he wants you, Thomas, to be in his next movie, starring and playing yourself. Thomas felt a little nervous. He'd never been in a movie before. Uh, but sir, really useful engines can't be in movies, can they? Well, starting tomorrow you're gonna be, and all your friends are also gonna star in it. But you, Thomas, are the star of the movie. Thomas smiled a little, but he still didn't feel comfortable being in a movie. But sir, I can't be really useful work on my branch line and be in a movie at the same time. Don't worry, Thomas, you can still work on your branch line. Whenever you take breaks on the movie. Okay, sir. And you can get back to, to your regular working schedule as soon as the film is finished. Okay, sir. Well, thanks for telling me. Well, have a good night, Thomas. Oh, and I just want to let you all know to be on your best behavior. Because the director and all the movie stars and crew are coming tomorrow at Nafford Station to meet us. And the director will be giving us the title of the movie. So I want you all to be on your best behavior. No arguing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll be on my best behavior. I'll be good as gold. I'll also be glad to bring the director to Nafford tomorrow, sir. I'm sorry, Gordon, but Spencer is bringing the director tomorrow. Gordon gasped. Sp Spencer! He and the other engines did not like Spencer because Spencer is always a show-off and always rude to the other engines of Sodor. Ah, now, I want you all to get, get a good night's sleep. Especially you, Thomas, because you have a movie to do tomorrow besides doing your jobs. Okay, good night, sir, good night, sir. Wow, I can't believe we're all going to be in a movie. I'll be the... Brightest red engine in the movie. You're always the brightest red engine, James. I know. <sighs> I want The Rock to play me. Never gonna happen, Percy. You're right, Edward. Then, Percy saw that Thomas was a little nervous. What's wrong, Thomas? Oh, nothing, Percy. I've just never been in a movie before. I'm feeling a little nervous. I won't even remember my lines. Oh, don't worry, Thomas. I'm sure you'll be fine. Thanks, Edward. And we'll all be there for you. Since we're all starting your movie. That makes me feel much better, Edward. Thank you. Now let's do what Sir Top Matt says and get some sleep. And that night, all the engines went to sleep. Except Thomas. Thomas was nervous about being in the movie, but he knew his friends would be there for him. So he closed his eyes and finally went to sleep. Not looking forward to being in a movie. The next morning, Thomas and his friends gathered at Nafford Station to meet the director. Thomas still felt a little nervous. You must be proud of being in a movie, Thomas. Uh, not really, Emily. I just want to get back to being a really useful engine. Even Annie and Clarabel heard about Thomas being in a movie, and they made him feel even more nervous. Oh, Thomas, we are so proud of you! 
You're going to be a star of your very own movie. Annie, Clarabelle, don't make Thomas worse. He's feeling a little nervous. Don't worry, Thomas. You'll have a wonderful time being in the movie. I'm sure you will. Thomas stopped feeling nervous. Thanks, Emily. Suddenly, some horns sounded in the distance. And behind, coming up the road to Nafford Station, were a bunch of movie studio trucks. There were two big trucks and three small trucks, but they were actually vans and trailers. The engines gasped. They knew Hollywood was coming to the island of Sodor. <laughs> the movie crew stepped out, but there were only two of them. A cameraman and a mic person. Then the engines heard a whistle they recognized. Then around the bend came Spencer and out stepped out of his coach was the director. Ah, thank you, Spencer. Right on time. Of course. I am happy to be back on Sodor. It's been a while. And a cool fact about myself, I am faster and better than any engine on Sodor. This made Sir Totten Hat's engines very cross. They all did not like Spencer because Spencer is known as a silver show-off. And Spencer was right. He hasn't been on the island for a few months. Ever since he stole Annie and Clarabelle from Thomas and had a very bad accident. And after he was repaired, the Duke and Duchess of Bockford sent him to the mainland. But all the engines weren't happy to be to see Spencer. Anyways, hello, Island of Sodor. Hello, nice to meet you, sir. Hello, hello. Hello, sir. Hi, I'm Sean Sledgehammer. And here at Childhood Pictures, our truly honor to be doing our movie... Here on the island of Sodor. Please be assured, we will represent your beautiful little town as lovingly and respectfully as we can. And now, an engine who doesn't need any introduction. Let's hear it for Thomas the Tank Engine. And all the engines... Whistled an agreement. Thomas really was the star of the movie. Also are known as our star. It's really nice to meet you, Thomas, the tank engine. Oh, please, Mr. Sledgehammer, please just call me Thomas. All right. And you must be Sir Topham Hat. I heard so much about you that you're the controller of the railway. Yes, I am. I am very proud of all my engines. And as you can see, we are all happy that spring is now in the air. And I'd like to thank you for putting one of my engines, which is Thomas, in your movie. Um, excuse me, Mr. Sledgehammer, but what's the title of the movie Thomas has starred in? Oh. The title of the movie is called 
Thomas the Hero of Sodor. And the engines were very impressed. Um, would you like a silver engine in your movie, Mr. Sledgehammer? Uh, sorry, Spencer, but I already chose Thomas. Spencer gasped. He was sure a silver engine would be perfect for the movie. Um, excuse me, Mr. Sledgehammer. Yes, Thomas? I just want to let you know, Thomas. I am a very nice director. I'll only yell when I'm angry. Uh, thank you. And you could always call me Sean sometimes. Okay. Um, Mr. Sean Sledgehammer, um, after the movie's finished, can I go back to being a really useful engine? Of course you can, Thomas. I've been a fan of you since ever since I was a child. And I read all of your stories in books. Ding! Well, it's nice to meet a fan. Yes, it is, Thomas. And one last thing, Mr. Sean Sledgehammer. Thank you for letting me, letting all my friends be in the movie. You're very welcome, Thomas. All publicity is good publicity. Now, let's get, now let's make a movie. And all the engines, even Thomas, were excited. They were all going to be in a movie. But don't forget, engines, we have a railway to run. So after you're done doing your part in the movie, you get back to your jobs as soon as possible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will. I'll be as busy as you, you, you'll see. And that includes you, Spencer. Or as I should remind you of what happened... Back in September. Yes, sir. And all the engines went to do their jobs. Um, Mr. Sledgehammer, am I allowed to be a little nervous in the movie? Oh, don't worry, Thomas. It's okay to feel a little nervous. Some actors are always nervous when before they're doing a movie. But I'm sure you'll be fine. But Thomas still wasn't so sure. Then, Dodge and Lady rolled up. They have heard about what that Thomas was going to be in a movie. Cheer up, Thomas. You'll have a wonderful time being in the movie. After all, you're the star. Thomas stopped feeling nervous. Thanks, Dodge. Thanks, lady. Oh, Dodge and lady, meet Mr. Sledgehammer. Sean Sledgehammer. Nice to meet you, Dodge and lady. You ready, Thomas? I'm ready, Mr. Sledgehammer. Excuse me, Spencer. I gotta get by. Spencer popped out of the way. Ah, spring is the perfect time to do a movie. It sure is, Mr. Sledgehammer. It sure is. In fact, all the engines on Sodor were happy that spring was here. All of them, indeed.
Later that evening, Henry Gordon, Lady Dodge, and Edward were chatting about Thomas being in a movie starring himself. But Spencer was still sulking that he wasn't the star of the movie. I can't believe Thomas, my boyfriend, is going to be starred in a movie. I know. And you and the others are going to be in it, Edward. I know, Dodge. I would say, normally I would say I'm too old to be in a movie, but for Thomas, I would do it. So would I. Even though normally I would say an express engine would be perfect for a movie, not him, but... Thomas, he is my friend, so I have to give him some respect. That's what Tottenham had told me. Same. And James, too. The engine's talking made Spencer cross. Ugh! Why is Thomas starred in that movie, and not me? Because, Spencer, Thomas was the one who stopped those runaway freight cars yesterday. And he saved the main line. Yeah, Spencer, you should be graduating, Thomas. Not sulking about it. And it's his movie. And Sean Sledgehammer chose Thomas to be in his movie, not you. But I was the one who brought Sean Sledgehammer to Sodor. And like I said before, I'm faster and smarter than all engines on Sodor work together. I said that once and I've said it again. This made the other engines very cross. Spencer, you won't be smarter or stronger than any of us. And Thomas tried to be brighter, stronger, and faster than you once. And that failed. And you also need to give Thomas some respect, Spencer. After all, I heard that you stole Annie and Clarabelle from him back in September. Spencer really didn't like being reminded about that. He really didn't want to, he really didn't want Thomas to be in the movie. He wanted himself to be in the movie. If you're just going to sulk about yourself jealous of Thomas Spencer, then we're going to leave. And Henry, Gordon, Lady, and Dodge and Edward left. They did not want to deal with Spencer at all.
Think about what we said, Spencer. But Spencer didn't listen. Then, a naughty idea flew into Spencer's funnel. Hmm. If I cause some mischief on the movie while no one is looking, Sean Sledgehammer will see that Thomas is not a pretend hero and not really a hero at all. And he'll let me be in the movie. It's like they always say, something goes wrong. Should I say, if something goes wrong, then Spencer the Silver Engine will be there to step into the starring role. Spencer was about to cause some mischief on the movie. And about to get Thomas, put Thomas in danger. Without him knowing. The next morning, after they did all their jobs, Thomas and his friends gathered at the first film location for the movie. Percy was a little curious. So what's happening today, Mr. Sledgehammer? We are filming the collapsing bridge scene. Every good action movie needs a good collapsing bridge scene. Toby over there is going to be standing on the bridge and, all, and is about to almost go down with it. Toby shook. Uh, what was that? Percy was puzzled. Uh, that sounds a little dangerous, doesn't it? Sean Sledgehammer smiled. True, it is, but not when you have the magic of the movies. Don't worry, Percy. Nothing is real. He's right, Percy. When they make movies in Hollywood, they use special effects like green screens and, and other stuff. Nothing is real. Yeah, don't worry, Percy. Toby's not gonna go down with the bridge. And neither is the bridge itself. Sir Topham, don't worry. Percy was surprised. Sean Sledgehammer really have read the books about Thomas and his friends. And he really does know the name of all the engines on Sodor. And besides, Percy, I am the right person to help me with the special effects. Sean Sledgehammer asked Thomas's fireman to do the special effects for him. But Percy was still worried that something might go wrong. Don't worry, Percy, everything will be fine. Remember, nothing in movies is real. Okay, Thomas. Just then, Spencer arrived. Spencer, what are you doing here? I've come to see how Thomas is going to be in the movie. I mean, after all, he shouldn't be the one starred in this movie. I should. Spencer, remember what I said to you last night? But Spencer wasn't listening. And he watched Toby talking to the mic man. Toby is too old to be a co-star for Thomas. I think I should be a co-star. Luckily, Toby didn't hear Spencer. That's not very nice, Spencer. Oh, you're too old too, Edward. Spencer. Can I get a sound from you, please, Toby? Of course. So Toby screamed. Help! 
Toby screams so hard, he surprised the other engines. Bust my buffers. Good screaming, Toby. Thanks, Percy. I'm just not comfortable being a co-star for you, for Thomas. You'll be fine, Toby. Thanks, Thomas. Sounds, Toby sounds good to me. Spencer, what you were saying? <laughs> this made Spencer very cross. It's a good thing I add a little special to special effects to the bridge last night while no one was around. Spencer whispered so no one else heard him. Just then, Sean Sledgehammer spoke on his megaphone. Okay, listen up, people. This is what's gonna happen. You guys... Quiet down. Um, excuse me, Mr. Sledgehammer. Uh, we're not people. We're engines. Oh, yeah. Uh, my apologies. You're right, Emily. My apologies. Anyway, so here's what's gonna happen. Now, Toby... You're going to be trapped on the on the bridge. Pretend that you're out of water and call. Toby still felt nervous. Uh, yes, Mr. Sledgehammer. Thomas, you're going to run onto the bridge and rescue Toby. But the bridge is going to collapse, so you have to puff up there fast. Yes, Mr. Sledgehammer. Okay, everyone. We're going for a take. Toby, get ready to do your line. The camera doesn't like you, Toby. Gordon. Why? It's true. Don't listen to Gordon, Toby. Just be yourself and be brave. Gordon made Toby nervous, but Toby... Knew Emily was right. So he did what Emily told him. And go camera! And the camera started rolling. Um, the bridge is not really going to collapse, is it? No, Percy. Don't worry, it won't. Camera! We're rolling! And action! Toby rang his bell and said his lines. Thomas, help! I ran out of coal and water. And I think the bridge is about to collapse because the foundations are so old. If I was the co-star, I would never say the bridge would collapse like that. Toby's got the motivation wrong. Spencer, quiet. Hold on. Toby, Thomas will come get you. Thomas, go get Toby and hurry. I don't think the bridge will hold him much longer. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thomas, help! Stay calm, Toby. I got you. Thomas's driver coupled Toby and Thomas together. But then there was trouble. Just as Thomas was about to back up like he's supposed to, the bridge started to collapse for real. Bust my buffers. The bridge is starting to collapse for real. That's not part of the movie. Um, was that supposed to happen? Mm -hmm. The bridge shuddered and shake. That's a sign that it's about to collapse. Sir Tobin Hat looked at Thomas's fireman. I didn't press the button yet, sir. Mr. Sledgehammer told me not to make the bridge collapse unless he told me to press the button. Sir Totten Hat was confused.
But the reason why the bridge was collapsing is because Spencer did something to the bridge last night when no one was around. He caused the foundation to be a little loose. Sean Sledgehammer knew the bridge was collapsing, but he didn't care. All he said to the cameraman was, Keep rolling! Keep rolling! Spencer smiled sneakily. Oh dear, it looks like the bridge is going to collapse and I don't think Thomas is going to be able to film through the rest of the movie. And he's going to end up in the Steamworks. Sneaky Spencer has done it again. Thomas knew the bridge was going to collapse and he and Toby had to get off it. So with a mighty heave, Thomas and Toby made it off the bridge just in time. And the bridge <laughs> collapsed. Cinders and ashes. That was close. Uh, should we do something? Yeah, keep rolling. And... Cut! That. That. The bridge fully collapsed. But once again, Sean Sledgehammer didn't care. All he said to Thomas was... That is the most heroic thing I've ever seen. You are going to be a big star. Thomas was confused. I don't understand. Surely the bridge wasn't supposed to really collapse. And didn't you go over safety measures, Mr. Sledgehammer? Safety measures? Safety measures? Kick. We got some great footage. But Derek was in a lot of... But Toby was in a lot of danger. But Mr. Sledgehammer didn't listen. Lot of danger. Okay, everyone, shut up, Mom, shut. Sir Tom Hack didn't like the way Sean Sledgehammer ignored Thomas, so he quickly turned stern. Mr. Sledgehammer, you need to listen to Thomas. And he's right. Surely the bridge wasn't supposed to collapse. You need to listen to my engines when they say something. I'm really sorry, Sir Topham. I don't know what wrong. But we'll be careful what happens next time. I hope so. I know your movie, you want your movie to be to be awesome, Mr. Sledgehammer, but we also want things on the movie to be safe. I don't know how things work in Hollywood. And I know your movie want I want you want your movie to be epic. But you you can finish please, Thomas. Thank you, sir. You might want everything in your movie to be epic, Mr. Sean Sledgehammer, but we also want everything to be safe. And here on Sodor, we engines always be careful. If we're if we don't be careful, I mean, if we're not careful, accidents happen. I'm really, really sorry, Thomas. Well, I'll remember that for now on. Good. So, for now on, Mr. Sledgehammer, make things a less epic. Yes, Sir Topham, I'm really sorry. Thomas, Sir Topham Hat, Mr. Sean Sledgehammer, or the cameraman or mic man or the other engines... Didn't know why the bridge collapsed. But they also didn't know that it was really Spencer who caused the bridge to collapse. And they didn't know that he was going to cause more mischief on the movie. And make everything more epic. Which means more accidents will happen.
That night at Tidmouth Sheds, Sir Topham Hatt and Sean Sledgehammer were talking to Thomas. Thomas, you did a great job on the set today. And I want to apologize once again for the bridge collapsing. That wasn't supposed to happen, but but it's all repaired now. Anyway, you did the right thing of getting Toby off the bridge just in time, or else you and him both could have gone down with the bridge. Thank you, Mr. Sledgehammer. Yes, Thomas. We don't know why, how that bridge collapsed, but guess we'll never know. Anyway, Thomas, you're needed on the next scene tomorrow for the movie. Okay, Mr. Sledgehammer. Just then... Spencer puffed in. Well done, Thomas. Save Toby from a collapsing bridge, I saw. Well, if I was the star of the movie, I would... I would rush up there and push Toby with a bump. Spencer, that's not very nice. But Spencer didn't listen. Excuse me, Mr. Sledgehammer. Since I brought you here to Sodor, um, would it be possible if you can put me in your movie? I'm sorry, Spencer, but I chose Thomas to be in, in my movie. But, 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 I'm, a, I'm faster, stronger, and shinier than Thomas. I mean, Thomas once tried to be shinier, stronger, and faster than me, and brighter than me, but he can't be like me. Mr. Sean Sledgehammer has made up his mind, Spencer. Thomas is the star of the movie, not you. No but, Spencer. It's rude to argue with someone. No more arguing. Now go back to your shed. It's getting late. But, but, Spencer, go. Now. This made Spencer very cross. I'm sorry you had to go through that, Thomas. It's okay, sir. I know how Spencer can get sometimes. Well, you better get some sleep, Thomas. We're finishing. We're going to keep on doing the movie tomorrow. And you need lots of sleep. And so will all your friends. Okay, Mr. Sean Sledgehammer. I'll see you tomorrow on the set. Good night, Thomas. Good night, Thomas. Shall I drive you to your hotel, Mr. Sledgehammer? Why, thank you, Sir Topham. Thomas was happy he did a good job on the collapsing bridge scene, but he was still curious of how the bridge collapsed. As he went to sleep that night. But Spencer. Overheard what. Sean Sledgehammer said to Thomas. I'll see. I'll just see how heroic Thomas can be on the set tomorrow. And Spencer. Puffed. Crossly away. He was going to cause more trouble on the movie tomorrow. The next morning, Thomas arrived at the next film location, which was on the main line. Some other engines gathered to watch Thomas, too. Good luck in the next film location, Thomas. Yeah! We know you're going to need it. Thanks, Stanley. Thanks, Rosie. You're right. I really am going to need it. I'm still a little nervous, but I know you're all here for me. Of course we are, Thomas. Right, James? Why is everyone looking at me? Right, James? 
Okay, 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 yes, yes. Emily, wh why do you keep saying right James to me? James, come on. Well, usually you would say a bright red engine would be perfect for the movie instead of Thomas, but come on, James. But I didn't say anything. Mm. Spencer was still trying to figure out what kind of mishap to cause on the movie, but he couldn't think of anything. Hopefully I'll think of something soon, because I really want to be the star of the movie. What did you say, Spencer? Oh, uh, nothing, Dodge, nothing. Uh, just talking to myself. Spencer, what did you say? Uh, nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Uh, good luck, Thomas, good luck. Thomas was surprised about Spencer telling him good luck. Uh, thank you, Spencer. Thank you. Are you ready, Thomas? As ready as you are, Mr. Sean Sledgehammer, and as ready as myself is. All right. Everyone quiet on the set, please. All right. Start rolling camera. We're ready to roll. Sean Sledgehammer held up his megaphone and yelled. So for the rest of the day, Thomas did heroic stuff as Sean Sledgehammer wanted him to. And the more Spencer saw Thomas doing busy, heroic stuff, the more cross and jealous he got. <laughs> yes, all day. Thomas was busy, busy, busy. Working on his branch line and doing the movie at the same time. And Spencer was got even more cross. Springtime.
and cut. Later, after he checked the editing, Sir Topham Hatt and Sean Sledgehammer were talking to each other. Sir Topham Hatt, sir, your tank engine, Thomas, is incredible. You should see him. He's got Action Hero all over him. We're going to be number one at the box office. And Thomas is more than good. He is a movie star. Sean Sledgehammer was talking out loud. All the engines could hear him. And Percy was curious. Uh, lady, what's a box office? A box office is... Is, well... A box office is also called a ticket office, Percy. It is a place where tickets are sold to the public for admission to an event. Patrons may perform the transaction at a contour top through a hole in a wall or window or a, at a wicket. Huh? Percy was a little confused, so he decided not to ask that question to Lady again. Meanwhile, Spencer was getting more cross. He was tired of hearing Sean Sledgehammer how good Thomas is, and he really wanted to get into the, to the movie really bad. Ugh, I'll find a way to get Thomas fired. It's the last thing I do. He whispered. Spencer was still trying to figure out how to get Thomas in trouble and get him out of the movie. That night, Thomas was doing a really useful job at the quarry. He had to take some freight cars of stone to the docks. Sean Sledgehammer told him that they have another big scene tomorrow. And he was still feeling a little nervous about being in the movie. Mavis had heard Thomas was going to be in the movie. She saw that Thomas was feeling a little nervous and thought she should help. Hello, Thomas. Are you a little nervous about the next scene in the movie tomorrow? Yes. Yes, I am. Mavis. There's supposed to be another big scene tomorrow, but... I am a little nervous, just like you said. Oh, don't worry, Thomas. I heard that you stopped the runaway trucks, and you led them right into here, and they crashed into the buffers over there. Don't worry, Thomas. You're going to be great in the next scene tomorrow. Thanks, Mavis. Well... I better go. See ya. Bye, Thomas. Remember, Thomas, everyone's nervous sometimes. And it's okay to be nervous. Thanks, Mavis. On the way to the docks, Thomas thought about what Mavis said.
Hmm. Mavis is right. Everyone's nervous. Even me. Mavis's advice made Thomas feel a lot better as he puffed along to Brendam Dock to drop off the stone cars. Thomas dropped the stone cars off at the docks. And puffed back to Tidmouth Sheds. He was very tired. Tomorrow, he wanted to get the next scene over with. The other engine saw how tired Thomas was of working on the movie. You did a very good job on the last scene of the movie, Thomas. And on the second scene, the third scene, and the first scene we did yesterday. The collapsing bridge scene, you know. I know, Percy. Sean Sledgehammer is very impressed with me. He sure is. Also, Thomas, he asked me to tell you that the next scene is that you're going to be saving Toby from the edge of a cliff. Thanks for telling me, Emily. Now I know what the next scene is. Well, I better get some sleep. We all should, too. Not only do we have our jobs to do, but remember, we also have to help Sean Sledgehammer finish his movie. Quite right, Thomas. You actually agree with me, Gordon? Yes, Thomas. Sir Tom Matt did tell me to be nice to you while you're, since you're the star of the movie, so I will be nice to you. Well, thank you for the respect, Gordon. Anyway, we all better get a good night's sleep. So... See you all in the next scene tomorrow. And one by one, Thomas and his friends went to sleep. But none of them didn't know or see that Spencer had been listening and spying on them. Spencer heard what Thomas and his friends said, and he was more crosser than he was before. Ugh, that is it. I've had enough. I need to find a way to get Thomas in trouble and get him out of the movie. Spencer thought for a moment. Then, an idea flew into his funnel. Mr. Sean Sledgehammer did say tomorrow there's supposed to be a runaway trucks scene the next day. Oh wait, or was it the next day the runaway truck scene? No, I think the next day. The next day, right. Sean Sledgehammer said that he's going to prepare a couple of trucks for a runaway truck scene the next day. And he might ask Thomas to go over some safety measures. If I give Thomas the wrong chain, and he, if he tips over and goes over the edge of the cliff or not, he'll get cross and tell that Sean Sledgehammer should pay attention to safety, because safety is very important on the island. And so are the rules and regulations. When Thomas goes over the safety inspection of those freight cars, I will loose a few bolts on the winch that will be holding them and cause them to crash, and then Thomas will get fired. Yes, it's a great plan.
it's time for Sneaky Spencer to cause some trouble. Spencer had a very naughty idea to get Thomas in trouble. And so he can so he can step into the movie. He was gonna break some rules and regulations. The next morning, all the engines gathered at the cliffs for the next filming scene. Okay, Thomas, we're gonna film the great cliffhanging scene. Every great action movie needs a great cliffhanging scene. They sure do. <laughs> Uh, just before we go any further, Mr. Sledgehammer, just like last time, did you go any go over any safety measures? Safety measures? Are you kidding? We're up to our eyes in safety measures. Look, look. There is look, look, Thomas. Toby will be hanging off the cliff. And you have to rescue him. You have two chains attached to each other. And the Sodor Search and Rescue Team are on standby. And look, Arthur just arrived with Rocky. In case you derail, he'll lift you back onto the track. Right, Rocky? I sure will, Mr. Sledgehammer. Don't worry, Thomas. You will be wearing a special safety chain to pull Thomas back onto the track. If I was in the movie, Mr. Sledgehammer, I would pull Toby back onto the track. Yes, but you're not doing anything dangerous, Spencer. 
This made Spencer cross. All right, Thomas, you ready? Uh, okay, Mr. Sledgehammer. Don't worry, Thomas. You'll be okay. I know I will, sir. So Tom and Hat walked over to the engines to get out of the way. Prepare to be on standby, Bell and Flynn. Yes, sir. You got it, sir. You too, Butch. Don't worry, sir. We're ready and able. Of course I'm not doing the dangerous stuff. Thomas the Big Hero is. <sighs> okay, Toby, get ready to do your you-know-what, your lines. Uh, yes, Mr. Sledgehammer. Toby's front and back wheels were off the rails. To make it look like he was going to go off the edge. But Thomas knows that he's not really going to go off the edge because he's going to rescue him. But Spence, but they didn't know that Spencer that had switched the chains. Soon everything was ready. Thomas was ready to do his line. And so is Toby. All right, engines and for top of how we're going for a take. The cameraman got his camera ready. Help! Help! Thomas! Help! Stay calm, Toby. I'm coming! Thomas's driver coupled Thomas to Toby. But he didn't see the, that the chain was rusty. Spencer made a grin on his face. It's too bad Thomas is going to run out of chain when he pulls Toby back to safety. Because you can't have a big action hero move in a movie when he's in the steamworks. Damaged. <laughs> oh, thanks, Thomas. What happened was is that I was puffing along, that I hit a rock on the track, and then my wheels lifted off the rails, and... Then there was trouble. The chain creaked and snapped. And Thomas and Toby started flipping on their sides. Whoa, cinders and ashes. Oh, ah, ah, help! Thomas and Toby were about to flip over. Wait, what's going on? What's happening? Oh dear, Thomas and Toby are about to flip over. How is that happening? I don't know. How could that happen over a few safety measures? Oh wait, look what Thomas is doing. Thomas knew what to do. So his driver recoupled him. And hop back in his cab. I got you, Toby. Hold on. And with a mighty heave, Thomas pulled Toby to safety. Luckily, no one was hurt. And Thomas's driver jumped clear. Whoa, I've never seen Thomas do that before. Cameraman, keep rolling. Huh. It's all right, we're okay. Thomas looked at the cameraman and yelled at him to... Your tank engine, Thomas is incredible. Spencer, move! Thomas yelled at the cameraman. 
Okay! Stop filming right now! And the cameraman shut off the camera! Sir Topham Hatt and Thomas spoke to Sean Sledgehammer. I don't think I like being Thomas's co-star. That was great. Thomas, you make a great movie star. One more scene to film and we're done for the day. Thomas was cross. Never mind that, Mr. Sledgehammer. That's not important. I know you gave me and Toby some chains, but we almost flipped on our side and went off the track. And we could have ended up in the steamworks. Thomas is right, Mr. Sledgehammer. I think you need to pay attention to pay more attention to safety. I'm very sorry, Sir Topham Hat, sir. And I'm very sorry to you most of all, Thomas. I don't know what went wrong. Maybe somebody gave Thomas and Toby the wrong chain. Probably, Flynn. That's the second big accident that went wrong on this movie. Like Sir Topham had said, Mr. Sledgehammer, you need to pay more attention to safety. Safety is very important. Then, Spencer spoke up. I, I, I think I might have an idea, Mr. Sledgehammer. Since Thomas is an honorary member of the Sodor Search and Rescue Center, why not let him go over the safety inspection? And Bell and Flynn and Butch here can... Go over the safety checks, too, for now on. Thomas? I'd be happy to, Mr. Sledgehammer. Me and Flynn the same. Fiery Flynn is here for a reason, you know. Same. I don't just pull cars, I also pull engines back onto the track. And to the steamworks. If you can go over the safety inspection and checks with me, sir. I will be happy to do that for you, Thomas. You can always ask me for help, remember. This made Sean Sledgehammer very happy. That, then it's settled. Then, Spencer huffed to himself without no one knowing. Yes, I have to say it's the best plan I ever made. <laughs> I even sound like Diesel 10 and Diesel. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't mean to go off the tracks. I didn't see that rock on it. It's okay, Toby. Accidents happen. Just be careful next time. And cut. That's a wrap, everybody. Excuse me, Sir Topham Hat, sir. Can you please check the winch? For the next scene tomorrow. And can both you and Thomas do it, please? I would be happy to, Mr. Sean Sledgehammer. All right, now the rest of you engines. You go do your jobs. Like you should do after the movie. And all the engines went to do their jobs. But Stanley, Lady, and Percy had finished their jobs early before the, the filming. So they stayed a little longer. And so did Bell and Flynn. They had to go over the safety checks. And Butch, too. A few minutes later, the movie crew set up, set up the winch, and Toby shunted the trucks into place for them. And Thomas turned around to do the inspection with Sir Topham Hat. Come on, Stanley and Percy. We better get back to the sheds and get some sleep. We're going to be here tomorrow after we finish all our jobs early. 
Okay, lady. We'll see you tomorrow back here, Thomas. Thanks, Stanley. Thanks, lady. Thanks, Percy. And the three engines puffed away. Sir Totten Hat took out a clipboard and a pen to inspect the winch. I just, we, I mean we, just need you and Thomas to inspect the winch and the freight cars, Sir Topham. We need those freight cars to stop when they reach the bottom of the hill. If they don't, we're all in trouble. And who knows what will happen. Don't worry, leave that to me and Thomas, Mr. Sledgehammer, but most of all, Thomas. And also leave it to Flynn, Bell, and... and Butch. I wrote a lot of papers in my office. 24-7. Thank you, Sir Topham. I'm happy that you're going over the safety inspections, Thomas. That made Thomas' firebox glow. Excuse me, Spencer. You have to move. I have to inspect the winch. Please. Spencer didn't like Thomas telling him what to do. You're not the boss of me, Thomas. Spencer! Thomas asked you nicely to move, so move, please. This made Spencer a little cross. Spencer also had to move out of the way for Butch, Flynn, and Bell. They were going to go over the safety checks inspections with Thomas since the Totten had too. Thomas is going to get in trouble soon. Tomorrow. So Thomas... His driver, Sir Topham Hat, Bell, Flynn, and Butch went over the safety checks inspections on the winch and freight cars. There was a rope tied to the freight car so they won't roll down the hill. Hey Toby, aren't you going to go back to your shed? Oh, I will, Thomas. I just want to stay here for a few minutes. My axles ache a little. Okay, Toby. Spencer watched Thomas go over the safety checks inspections. It's comforting, isn't it, Mr. Sean Sledgehammer? Sean Sledgehammer shook his head yes. Spencer did another grin on his face. As soon as the engines leave, he was going to do something to the winch. Well, Thomas, the freight cars look very sturdy. They are as safe as houses. Okay, sir. I'm happy you are here... I don't want anyone to think that I didn't go over the safety checks and inspections. Don't worry, Thomas. You and I know we both went over it together. And so does Bell, Flynn, and Butch, and your driver. Now, come on. Let's go home and get some sleep for tomorrow. Okay, sir. And Sir Totten Hat, Thomas's driver, hopped on Thomas. And all the engines puffed away. Bell, Flynn, and Butch went back to the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. And Thomas puffed back to Tidmouth Sheds. And Sean Sledgehammer went back to his hotel to bed. See you tomorrow, Spencer. But Spencer didn't listen to Thomas. 
you popped up to the witch. There, all done. Now let's go home to bed. Shall we? Yes, we shall. Spencer puffed up to the freight cars. He didn't see Toby about to puff away. But Toby saw that Spencer was being suspicious and he stopped. But Spencer didn't see or hear him. His driver got out of his cab and walked towards the winch. Spencer asked his driver to loosen some of the bolts on the winch. <laughs> now everyone will think that Thomas didn't go over the safety inspection and he'll get fired from the movie. Spencer didn't know that Toby overheard everything he said. Toby was worried. And he puffed away so he wouldn't be seen. The next morning, everyone was back at the same film location. All the movie trailers and trucks were there. And so were Thomas and all the rest of his friends. Flynn, Butch, and Belle were on standby in case something went wrong. And the camera had been moved. Ready to film the trucks as they went down the hill. So what's happening today, Mr. Sledgehammer? Today we are filming the runaway freight car scene. Every great action movie needs a runaway freight car scene. And since this is the island of Sodor, the freight cars will be on the loose and coming down the big hill at a full speed. Thanks to the winch that Thomas and Sir Totten had inspected. Rosie and Lady looked at each other. Very fast? No, not really fast. In Hollywood, we always follow the laws. But remember, in movies, we use special effects. The freight cars won't really be coming down very fast. We're going to add some special effects in the editing. And if something does go wrong, the Sodor Search and Rescue Team will be on duty. Unfortunately, Rocky couldn't be here because he had to help Diesel when he had an accident. Then, Percy and Stanley looked at each other. Um, excuse me, Mr. Sledgehammer, but I thought things were used by computers these days. Yeah, in Hollywood, don't they use computers? When they do movies? Yes. We do use movies, but... At Childhood Pictures, we liked everything to be real. Don't worry, it's true that everything is done by computers these days. And Sir Topham Hatton Thomas are also standing by up there on the hill. Now, when the freight cars come curing down the hill towards the camera, Percy gasped. Whoa, 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 what? Don't worry, Percy. Nothing won't happen. Nothing bad's gonna happen. Thomas, the, the hero of the movie, the big cheese, the leader of the track, has inspected the winch and it's all safe and sound you don't have to worry percy this made percy feel better he knew his best friend thomas inspected the winch and the freight cars will stop right at the camera right where we'll cut just before it reaches the camera yes stanley just before it reaches the camera 
All right, everyone, let's go for a take. Thomas's driver removed the safety rope from the freight cars and backed up for safety. But no one still didn't know that Spencer had messed with the winch and that the bolts were now loose. And neither was Sean Sledgehammer. He was too excited. This is going to be a great action shot. Spencer knew his plan was going to work. He looked at the winch and the freight cars and Thomas and Sir Topham Hat and Sean Sledgehammer. Sean Sledgehammer hold up his megaphone and yelled, and action! And just like that, the freight car started rolling down the hill slowly. So far, so good, sir. You're right, Thomas. The freight cars rattled and rolled down the hill. Suddenly, the bolt started to break on the winch and sparks lid from it. Percy saw this. Uh, is that supposed to happen? The winch is starting to wobble. No, Percy, it's not supposed to happen. The bolt started breaking from the winch. The more the freight cars rolled, the, the more loose the bolts came. Then there was trouble. The winch broke! Cinders and ashes, the winch! And the freight cars rolled away down the hill. Faster and faster, dragging the winch behind them. The engines gas as the freight cars race past them. Then Thomas saw that the freight cars were heading right for Sean Sledgehammer and the movie crew. So he raced after to stop them. And Spencer followed along behind him without him knowing. Sir Topham Hat was in shock. The freight cars got nearer and nearer to the movie crew. Oh no. Thomas was worried he would never get to them in time. But it was already too late. Sean Sledgehammer and the movie crew got out of the way just in time. But they forgot to move the camera. The freight cars... Crashed into the camera! And the freight cars came off the track and piled high into a heap. The camera! Thomas screeched to a stop. He was too late. The freight cars were piled high into a heap. And so was the winch along with them. Luckily, no one was hurt. But the camera was in pieces and destroyed. Thomas backed up. He looked at the camera. Bust my buffers. The camera. It's a good thing the footage wasn't on there. Never mind. 
I'll go get Rocky and put the freight cars back on the tracks. Then Spencer puffed up. I'm afraid it's too late for that, Thomas. Looks like you're in trouble. Sean's sledgehammer was very cross. He walked up to Thomas. I thought you were doing the safety checks, Thomas. Thomas was confused. I, I don't know what went wrong and what happened. It seems like our hero of Sodor isn't a hero anymore. You have failed a safety check and endangered lives. And when I said safety check, I mean a certain safety check, Thomas. But I did check it, Spencer. Me, Sir Tom Hat, the rescue team, and my driver all checked it. But Sean Sledgehammer wouldn't listen. I nearly got run over by freight cars because of you. I'm going to tell Sir Tom Hat about this. And you're going to pay for this. And I'm going to make sure that you never work on my movie again. I will see to it. And Sean Sledgehammer walked away crossly. This made Thomas very worried. That evening, Sir Totten had spoke to Thomas at Napford Station. Some of the other engines heard what happened and came to support Thomas. I'm very sorry, Thomas, but Mr. Sledgehammer informed me due to an incident that happened earlier today, this morning. He says that you are no longer, you can no longer be the star of his motion picture. After what happened to the winch and the fr I'll try and talk to Mr. Sledgehammer again, Thomas, but I'm afraid Once again, you're not allowed. Also, since you're a member of the Sodor Search and Rescue Center, the Sodor Search and Rescue Center is uh, renowned for its members. We can't have a respectful Search and Rescue Center member uh, fail our safest of safety checks. So I know I can no longer be a member of the Sodor Search and Rescue Center for now on at all, sir. I'm afraid so, Thomas. And all the engines felt bad again. But sir, I'm sorry, Thomas, but this is something I've never thought I've had to do. But a decision has been made. You are no longer allowed to be in Mr. Sledgehammer's motion picture. All the engines were silent still. Thomas felt terrible. He knew he went over the safety inspection and checks. So Tom Hat, his driver, and the Sodor Search and Rescue Team went over them together. But he didn't know what went wrong still. And now he was in trouble with Sir Topham Hat and he was no longer allowed to be in the movie. There was nothing else he could do about it. Thomas was heartbroken. He decided that he should be alone. So, he puffed sadly away to be alone. All the engines still felt very sorry for Thomas. they never seen him so upset before. But Lady most of all saw how upset Thomas was. Thomas was her boyfriend. And she wanted to help her boyfriend. 
so she decided to talk to him. So, without no one seeing, she puffed after him. And all the engines went back to work. <laughs> Meanwhile, Spencer was having some thoughts to himself. He was happy that Thomas got fired. Now Sean Sledgehammer has a new title for his movie. The super engine, Blaze of Glory. Sean Sledgehammer fired Thomas and now he has no engine for his movie, AKA his motion picture. He'll, that means he'll probably choose me. I'd like to give this, uh, what is that? How to move? He stars talk again. Oh yeah, I'd like to accept this award to all the engines on Sodor because I'm better than them, including Thomas for getting fired. Spencer was happy that Sean Sledgehammer has changed the title of his movie and took all the Thomas stuff out of it. And he was sure that he'd be the star of the movie now. Meanwhile, Thomas popped along to find a place to be alone. He saw an old track and he puffed onto it. With Lady far behind him. Thomas was really upset and he didn't stop puffing. He just kept going. Thomas kept puffing and didn't stop. And he still didn't know that Lady was right behind him. At last, Thomas stopped at the top of a hill. He really wanted to be alone. I can't believe everyone thinks I didn't go over the safety checks and inspections. And now I'm in trouble for something I didn't do. I just don't know what went wrong with those freight cars. This lady puffed up to Thomas and she stopped. She saw that Thomas looked very upset. Oh, poor Thomas. Oh. She felt very sorry for her boyfriend. So, she decided to wait a few minutes and then she'll talk to him. Back at Tidmouth Sheds, Stanley, Edward, Percy, Emily, and Rosie we're talking about the accident and about Thomas. Poor Thomas. I wish there was something we can do to make him feel better. I know. And I believe him. I believe he went over the safety checks and inspections. I even asked Belle and Flynn at the search and rescue center. And they said they, they and Thomas and Sir Tom Hap and his driver went over the safety inspection then checks together. But who knows what went wrong with those freight cars, Edward? You're right, Stanley. Someone must have messed or tempered with the 
winch and caused it to to be loose and get wobbly. But who would do something like that? I would say it's someone who act who's worse than Diesel or Diesel 10. But who? The engines thought about this, but just then, Toby puffed in with a very big message. Did you hear what happened at the at the movie scene today? Yes, Toby. Apparently, Thomas didn't go over the safety inspection and checks and and the freight car and there was a big accident. And everyone and Sean Sledgehammer was very cross and everyone thinks that Thomas caused it. Well, Thomas didn't cause the accident. The engines gasp. What do you mean, Toby? What I mean, Stanley, is that Spencer was behind this. He he did something to the winch and and mess with it. I saw him do it yesterday. When I was about to puff away back to Arlesdale End, I saw Spencer being suspicious. So I stopped and spied on him in case I have to tell Sir Topham Hatt. And I overheard his plan. He said that he was going to try and get Thomas in trouble. And so his driver got out of wrench and messed with the bolts on the winch. I was going to tell Sir Topham Hatt, but... He already went home to bed. It's true. Thomas did go over the safety inspections. But Spencer made everyone think that he didn't. The engines gasped. It was Spencer that messed with the safety lines. And it was Spencer that got Thomas in trouble. They were all very cross with Spencer. Well, we can't just let Spencer get away with this. Emily's right. We have to stop him. But how? We can pay him back. That will make a way if his actions come... That will make his actions come back to him. True, Percy, but... That will make our actions find a way to come back to us. Remember, two wrongs don't make a right. Well, what can we do? The only thing we can do is tell Sir Topham Hatt. Do you think Sir Topham Hatt will be cross? Oh, you bet he, Sir Topham Hatt will be cross, Rosie. After all, this is the worst thing that Spencer ever done. More worse than he tried to scrap Hero. And you know what? I just thought of something. I bet it was also Spencer who caused the bridge to collapse. And caused Thomas and P Toby to almost end up in the steamworks. I almost said Percy. Sorry. After all... I did see a few combustibles under the bridge when Thomas popped up to Toby. Well then, we have to go tell Sir Totten Hat immediately. Sean Sledgehammer said that the next film location will be Napford Station, so Sir Totten Hat will be there. Also, a little curiosity. 
If Thomas is no longer the star of the movie, then who's going to be the hero? I mean, Sean Sledgehammer... did say to learn who his or her lines. Oh, Sean Sledgehammer chose Gordon. Gordon? Why? Well, he's blue like Thomas, and... You know what? Chatting is not going to help save Thomas. We have to go Sir Topham Hat. Tell Sir Topham Hat now. So all the engines went to find Sir Topham Hat. They knew it was the right thing. And they wanted to prove that Thomas was innocent. Later, the filming crew were, were at Nafford Station, as Stanley predicted. And some of the engines were there to watch the next scene. Annie and Clarabelle had to be taken out of the sightings, out of the way, so they won't be seen in the movie. All right, Gordon. Now, since Thomas caused an accident today, you are the new hero and the star of the movie. We've taken all the Thomas stuff out and... Rename the title. Gordon the Big Blue Engine. Blazing Glory. Gordon wasn't comfortable being a movie star. He was happy that Thomas was a movie star. Oh, the indignity. Just tell me what I have to do, Mr. Sledgehammer. Gordon, be nice. Okay, Gordon. Here's what you're going to do. So we're going to film a really big explosion. Every great action movie needs a big explosion. You mean you're going to blow up Nafford Station? Aye, that sounds bad. Oh, don't worry, Donald and Douglas. Nafford Station isn't really going to explode. See those subwoofers in the station? Now, when Gordon's driver here pushes the button... It's going to set off the sound woofers. And... And it's going to make an explosion sound. Now, when the freight cars race into the sidings, you, Gordon, will get you in that shot, and then we'll cut to you fighting the fire. The pretend fire, that is. And it's gonna be great. Uh, okay, Mr. Sledgehammer. Now, get your lines right, and it's 15 minutes till we start rolling, Gordon. Now Gordon felt very uncomfortable. Oh, the indignity. Uh, Mr. Sledgehammer, can I please have a word with you about Thomas? Now, Mr. Sledgehammer, I know you're upset with Thomas, but I believe he, me, his driver, and the Sodor Search and Rescue crew went over the safety inspection. I know you did, Sir Tom, but Thomas is no longer allowed to be in this movie. I don't trust him after what he did. Well, I think you should give him another chance and apologize for yelling at him, Mr. Sledgehammer, because he felt hurt. After you yelled at him, Mr. Sledgehammer thought about this. You're right, Sir Topham. I'll apologize to him, and maybe I'll give him a second chance. Thank you, Mr. Sledgehammer. Now, if you need anything, I'll be right back here. Okay, Sir Topham. But neither Sir Topham Hatt or Sle Sean Sledgehammer or any of the engines didn't see that Spencer pulled up next to the buffers and popped into Nafford Yards with a freight car full of dangerous combustibles. Combustibles means explosion. 
Mr. Sledgehammer wants an explosion in this movie. I'll give him a big explosion. When those combustibles blow up, everyone will think that Thomas put them there. And he'll be in even more trouble. <laughs> Sneaky Spencer is... is on it. Back on the old track, Thomas was having thoughts to himself. He was thinking about the accident. And that Sean Sledgehammer yelled at him. I'll see to it that you never work on my movie again! Sean Sledgehammer's words swirled around Thomas's wheels. Lady thought that it, now it was time to talk to Thomas and try and make him feel better. So he puffed up to him. Hey, Thomas. Hey, lady. Are you okay? No, I really don't want to talk about it. Well, you should talk. We should talk about it, Thomas. It will help. No, lady, I don't want to talk about it. Just please tell me what's wrong, Thomas. Lady, please, no. Thomas, please, I'm here for you. It's for your own self. I'm just too upset to explain what's wrong, lady. But fine, I'll explain what's wrong. Thomas was too upset to talk to lady. And he knew that she won't leave him alone until he tells her what's wrong. Come on, Thomas, just tell me slowly. Just calm down and explain the whole thing. <sighs> Thomas really didn't want to talk about it, but he had to, or else Lady won't leave him alone. Hey, what's going on? Tell me what's wrong. I know there's something we can do. It may not be clear. That's why I'm here. Tell me what's bothering you. Got something on your mind, don't you keep it inside. You're gonna be fine, Thomas. Hey, tell me what's wrong. What's going on? Thomas took a deep breath. Now he knew he had to tell Lady why he was upset. Okay, lady. Fine. I'll tell you what's wrong. Thomas explained the whole thing to lady. About the accident. That Sean, Sledger, Sean Sledgehammer yelled at him. And he got in trouble with Sir Topham Hatt. Lady was surprised. Oh, Thomas, I am so sorry. It's not your fault, lady. It's... It's Sean Sledgehammer who should apologize for yelling at me. Well, people yell when they're upset, Thomas. Sean Sledgehammer will probably apologize, but he won't let you be in his movie again. I wish he never doubted me. But I'm, and I'm pretty sure I went over the safety checks and inspections. But I just have a feeling someone messed with them. But who? Lady and Thomas thought about this. They had no idea that Spencer got Thomas in trouble. That evening, the movie crew were ready for the next film scene. And all the engines were ready to watch. And Percy, Stanley, Rosie, Emily, Edward, and Toby arrived to tell Sir Totten Hat what happened. 
but they, and none of the engines were Sir Top and Hat or Sean Sledgehammer, still didn't see T Spencer setting up the, the combustibles. And Spencer's driver just finished putting the last combustible in place. Spencer was happy what he did. All he had to do was loosen a few bolts and get rid of Thomas. <laughs> Sneaky Spencer has done it again. Okay, engines. This is the big one. So please stand where you are, please. And all the engines did what Sean Sledgehammer did. I... This is going to be the biggest explosion Hollywood has ever seen. I agree, Dougie. It's too bad Thomas is missing this. I wonder where he is. Now it was Percy, Stanley, Rosie, Emily, Edward, and Toby's chance to tell Sir Topham Hatt. Um, excuse me, sir. Yes, Percy? Uh, we have something to tell you. It's about the accident and Thomas. We think that Spencer did something. Well, go ahead and tell me. So Percy, Stanley, Rosie, Emily, Edward, and Toby explained to Sir Totten Hat. First, they told him what Toby saw, what Edward, what Spencer did. Then they told them that it was Spencer who caused the accident and got Thomas in trouble. So Top and Hat turned furious. Hmm. Thank you for telling me, everybody. I will speak to Thomas and Spencer after the film. And I'll have to have a talk with Sean Sledgehammer again if I will. Well, thanks for telling me. You all did the right thing. And that's all that matters. At last, Spencer's driver finished putting the combustibles in place. But no one still didn't see. But... Donald saw Spencer. Hey, Spencer! What are you doing over there? Oh, uh, nothing in particular, uh, Donald. Uh, are you sure? Uh, yes, nothing going on here, Donald. Okay. Spencer almost got caught. Luckily, he didn't. At last, it was time to film the next scene for the movie. Sean Sledgehammer holed up his megaphone and yelled, all right, freight car, sighting explosion, scene 97, take one. We're rolling. Gordon's driver pulled up the remote, prepared to press the button to make the winch pull the freight cars. And action! The winch pulled the freight cars very slowly. Sir Topham Hat crossed his fingers. Hopefully nothing goes wrong. But something was about to go wrong. The freight cars bumped into the... to the buffers. Like they should. Then... Gordon's driver... pressed the button. And the subwoofer sounds went off. But Gordon's driver also had a remote to make the combustibles explode too. He pressed the button and then there was trouble. There was a mighty explosion! Whoa! Combustible tanks flew everywhere. Ah! The engines gasped in horror. 
And soon, all of Nafford Yards caught fire. <gasps> Bust my buffers. Spencer knew his plan backfired. So he backed up to try and get away from the fire. But a combustible tank landed behind him. And black smoke filled the air. Spencer couldn't see. He couldn't go forwards or backwards. And the explosion caused the freight cars to come off the track. And the explosion was seen from Brendam Docks to where Thomas and Lady were. Whoa! Bam! Cinders and ashes! A fire! At Nafford! Come on, lady! Uh, Sodor? I think we might have a problem. I'll call the Sodor search and rescue team. Soon the alarm rang at the Sodor search and rescue center. A movie special effect has gone wrong and set fire to all of Nafford Yards. Trembling tracks. This is the biggest fire that there has ever been on the island of Sodor. Even bigger than the, the great fire of Sodor. But we can fight it. Come on, Flynn, let's go. Fiery Flynn to the rescue. And Harold, Bell, and Flynn raced to Nafford Station as quickly as they could. Meanwhile, the fire was getting worse. Spencer was trapped inside, and no one didn't know. Sir Tottenham Hatt told the engines to back up for safety. Come on, everyone. Let's all move to safety. The rescue team is on their way. Even the movie crew didn't want to be near the fire, but Sean Sledgehammer didn't want to move to safety. He wanted to finish the movie. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Keep them rolling. We can get some great action shots. You're on your own in there, mate. At last... Bell, Flynn, and Harold arrived at the fire. And Flynn switched to road wheels. And Harold inspected the fire from above. This is a big fire, but we'll put it out. Yes, but... You don't have your water bucket, Harold. Yeah, it has leaks. It's being fixed. Sir Totten Hat was worried. Ooh, if only Thomas were here. Yes, if Thomas would here was here, he'd know what to do. Where is Thomas when you need him? Just then. Around the bend came Thomas and Lady. Thomas is going to save the day. Of course he will, Flynn. Sir, is there anything I can do to help? Yes, Thomas. The Island of Sodor needs you once again. Percy, Toby, Emily, Rosie, Stanley, and Edward explained what happened. They explained that it was Spencer who sabotaged the freight cars. Thomas gasped. 
cinders and ashes. Bust my buffers. Then Gordon just remembered. Sir, Spencer is over there. He's probably trapped in the black smoke in the fire. Oh no. Oh no. Fizzling fireboxes. <gasps> Sir, what do we do? Ooh, I don't know, Thomas. I think that you got this under control. I do? Yes, Thomas. We need you to tell us what to do. Sir Topham Hat is not an honorary member of the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. Well, neither am I. Well, you are again, Thomas. Welcome back to the team. Thomas smiled. Then he made a few decisions and gave everyone important jobs. Okay, everyone, listen up. This is a big emergency, but we can do it if we all work together. Gordon, sir, you make sure everyone is safe. Bell and Flynn, you fight these fires. Lady, you go with Sir Topham Hat and Gordon and make sure the, everyone who is here is safe. I'll rescue Spencer. Roger that, Thomas. Oh, Thomas, get your driver and fireman to put on some special masks so they don't breathe in the smoke. Okay, Bell. So Thomas's driver and fireman put on some special masks to protect them from breathing in the smoke. Bell and Flynn started to fight the fire. Oh, and Harold. You watch from above. Roger that, Thomas. Be careful, Thomas. I will, sir. Don't worry. So Bell and Flynn started to fight the fires. Water gushed everywhere. Andy and Penny, you... And Thomas slowly puffed into the smoke to rescue Spencer. Come on, Thomas. Be careful, please. Wheel turn by wheel turn. Thomas puffed slowly into the black smoke but he couldn't see Spencer it was too smoky Thomas couldn't see a thing Spencer Spencer but Spencer didn't reply if Spencer can't hear my voice then maybe he'll hear my voice Oh wait, but I already tried my voice. I'll try calling again. Spencer! Spencer! But still, Spencer didn't reply. So Thomas decided to whistle for Spencer instead. Spencer! Then, Thomas heard something. Help! 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 Thomas! I'm over here! And out of the smoke, Thomas could see Spencer in front of him. He puffed up to him. Don't worry, Spencer. I'm here. Spencer knew he had to, to spill the beans. Thomas, I'm sorry. It was me who got me you in trouble. Yes, Spencer. I know it was you who got me in trouble. But that's not important. So let's save that for later. I have to get you to safety. 
So Thomas's driver coupled Thomas and Spencer together. And Thomas's driver gave Spencer's driver and fireman some special masks so they can stop breathing in the smoke. Because they were coughing off a lot. And with a mighty heave, Thomas pulled Spencer out of the smoke. Bell, there's some still some flames in there. On it, Thomas. Bell continued to fight the fire, and so did Flynn. Water gushed. Br Bell and Flynn were very brave. At last, the fire was out. And, and Sean Sledgehammer filmed through the whole thing and got all what happened including what Thomas did. And as soon as the fire was out, Sir Tom Hatt and all the engines came back to Nafford. Luckily, Nafford Station didn't get burned down, and no one was hurt. Huh. <sighs> Great work, Bell. You too, Flynn. Bell and Flynn were exhausted. And soon, Harvey and Rocky arrived to clean up the mess. And Thomas and Spencer puffed out of the last of the smoke. Well done, Thomas. Thank you, sir. But... But what happened here? How did this fire start? Hmm, that's a good question, Thomas. I don't know how this fire started. Um, sir, I think me and Flynn know how it started. It looks like someone overdid it with some combustibles. Sir Totten Hat looked at Sean Sledgehammer. I didn't add any combustibles to the to my movie. It was supposed to be a fake explosion, not a real one. We didn't add combustibles. Then Thomas spoke up. Don't worry, sir. I think I know who add the combustibles to the movie. And all the engines looked at Spencer crossly. Let's just say the, the explosion happened to a silver engine who wanted to be in the movie and tried to get me in trouble again by adding a lot of combustibles and overdid it. Spencer knew he was in trouble now. Sir Topham Hatt was very cross. He walked up to Spencer. And Spencer explained what he did. I am very sorry, sir. Thomas is right. It's all my fault. I double the amount of combustibles by the buffers when they weren't looking. I was trying to get Thomas in trouble again. I really wanted to be the star of the greatest action movie ever. Now, but now I know that Thomas is a real hero, not an actor like me. And I wasn't even, I know I wasn't an actor. I'm really sorry, sir. I didn't mean to go this far. All the engines were very cross. Sir Totten Hatt spoke to Spencer severely. You caused a lot of damage and put engines in danger, Spencer. This is very serious. And to make matters worse, 
You have caused confusion and delay. You got Thomas in trouble by making everyone think he didn't go over the safety checks and inspections. You almost put him and Toby in the steamworks twice because of the collapsing bridge and at the cliffs. And worst of all, you almost made Nafford Station burn down. Because of you, Sean Sledgehammer movie was almost a failure. You're going to be punished when the Duke and Duchess of Boxford hears about this, Spencer. You need to apologize to Thomas for getting him in trouble now. Spencer knew Sir Tottenham was right. Thomas, I'm sorry for making everyone think you didn't go over the safety checks and inspections and made everyone think you caused a crash. Thomas smiled. That's okay, Spencer. I forgive you. Apology accepted. I hope you're ready for a punishment when the Duke and Duchess hear about this, Spencer. They're not going to be happy about this. Especially for the mess you've caused. And Spencer felt ashamed. Then Sir Totten had turned to Thomas. Well done, Thomas. You were a really useful engine. You saved the movie. You saved Nafford Station from going down in flames. And up in flames. And you saved Spencer. And you proved, Spencer, that you're an, a real hero, not an actor. You are once again very heroic, Thomas. I am very proud of you. And all the engines agreed. Thomas really was heroic once again. Thank you, sir. I'm just happy that everyone is okay. And that Spencer is going to be punished. Uh, Sir Topham? Uh, Thomas, Sean Sledgehammer wants to talk to you. Thomas, I am very sorry for... For accusing you, you didn't go over the safety checks and inspections. I'm, and I'm really sorry for yelling at you. That's okay, Mr. Sean Sledgehammer. Apology accepted. I'm, if I'm still in the movie, that is. Of course you're still in the movie, Thomas. Welcome back. And this made Gordon happy. He was no longer the star of the movie. As for you, Spencer, next time when I do a movie on the island of Sodor, I am not trusting you to bring me here. You know how dangerous combustibles are, and you almost destroyed private Sodor property. I hope you get punished and learn that combustibles are dangerous. I'm sorry, Mr. Sean Sledgehammer. I'm very sorry. Now I know that Thomas is a real hero, not a real, not a fake one, not like me. And you know what, Thomas? I just had another big idea. Another one? Yes. We will finish filming our movie after we clean up the mess on Nafford Station. And all your friends on Soda will be in it. And what a great action movie needs is a big premiere. And we're going to have that big premiere at Tidmouth Sheds. Where all of you can watch it. And all the engines were very happy. Even Thomas. That sounds great, Mr. Sledgehammer. And then finally, the island of Sodor can go back to normal. 
and I can be a really useful engine again. Just like I was when I saved Spencer from the fire. Spencer didn't talk anymore. He still felt ashamed. Before long, the mess at Nafford was all cleaned up. And Spencer was punished by the Duke and Duchess of Boxford. He was to stay in his shed for a whole week. And the next evening at Tidmouth Shed was premiere night. The workmen set up a big screen so the engines can watch the movie. Thomas was very excited to see himself in the movie. Then, Sean Sledgehammer had another big idea. Thomas, I just had another big idea. Thomas was surprised. Really? They just keep coming, don't they? What every great action movie needs is a sequel. Thomas the Tank Engine 2, The Fire Giveaway. Um, maybe you should wait to do the sequel, Mr. Sean Sledgehammer. I've had enough of being in a movie. You're right, Thomas. You're right. There's no need to overdo it. Now, will everyone quiet down, please? The movie is about to start. And all the engines quiet down. I hope The Rock plays me in the next movie. I already told you that it's never going to happen, Percy. Thank you, sir. I'm just happy that everyone's all right. Soon, the movie had ended, and all the engines cheered, and whistled. Thomas smiled. He still wanted to be the leader of the track, and for once, he was the leader of the track, but he knew that all of his friends and himself were the leaders of the track. And he couldn't have felt happier. And he was happy that he no longer has to be in a movie. And he was happy to be back to being a really useful engine. Working on the magical island of Sodor.
was born and strong is for the way. So handle musty, mighty man, oh, fearless, ready at the back. Reneas and then he is sad. So low it, Duncan, he's my man. Oh, Mr. Percival in charge. No one's too hard, no job's too large. Ha 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 
<laughs> Once again, you'll be laughing on the other side of your boiler soon. Silly steamies. <laughs> Isn't this relaxing, lady? Yes, Thomas, it is. And that sure was a great movie. But it's nice that you and I get to puff around the island and be alone for a while. And look at all those beautiful stars. Look at them twinkle. You know, lady, those stars aren't as beautiful as your eyes. Aw, thank you, Thomas. And those twinkling stars remind me of a song. Do you care to sing with me, lady? I would be lovely to lay Thomas. <laughs> Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are Up above the world so high Like a diamond in the sky Twinkle, twinkle, little star How I wonder what you are Hey, you know this song, so sing along! Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. You also know this next song, so all of you out there, sing along! You've got a friend in me You've got a friend in me When the road looks rough ahead And you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed just remember what your old pal said for You've got a friend in me 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 You've got troubles, well I've got them too there isn't anything that I wouldn't do for you. If we stick together, we could see it through. You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. Well, some other folks might be a little bit smarter than I am. Bigger and stronger too. Well, maybe. But none of them will ever love you the way I do. It's me and you, love. And as the years go by, Thomas, our friendship will never die. You're gonna see it's our destiny. You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me.